through Christ to get to the Father. Amen. When you are born again, then that means that you accept and you are in agreement with what he done and the price he paid on the cross. And when he laid down his life, no man take my life, but I give it. He became the ultimate sacrifice. Can you see it? Hmm? He's the lamb without spot, no sins, no blemishes. He's perfect. That's presented before the Father right now. As a living sacrifice, he gave his life, and he yielded. All right, well, through death of the cross, when he hung on the cross, he gave, he yielded up the ghost, right? The Bible said he didn't just fly to heaven right then. He descended into hell where souls were captivated. Do you know you, uh, if you died right now, at this moment, uh, since Jesus has released the place called Shore, which was a holding place for souls that wasn't doomed to hell, but they are in a hole, they were in a holding place, but now they're on, they're with him in paradise. He led captive, captive, and everybody. Listen to me, everybody that died in hope, believing that the Messiah was going to come, even David said, he won't leave my soul in hell. Huh? If, if I make my bed in hell, he'll find me there. Well, our King James Version called everything hell. You got, actually, you got four holding places. You got Hades, which was a place of torment. Remember the rich man died, lifted up his eyes in torment in hell. The poor man died, and the angel picked him up, his soul, laid his soul in the bosom of Abraham. Abraham wasn't in heaven. He was in a holding place here called Shul. And the Bible called it Abraham's bosom. Then you had Gehenna, which is the holding place in the book of Jude about the fallen angels that left their uh, first estate. And they left their assignments, but they didn't descend back to heaven. They, was, they are held today, right now, under your feet, in chains of darkness, in Gehenna. And the Bible we read call everything hell. The final place, which is hellfire and brimstone, is called Tartarus. That's when, after the judgment, It'll be a lake that you'll be forever cast into, never getting out, no release. The dragon, you read that in Revelation 20, the dragon, that old serpent, Satan, which we call the devil, is going to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. All the false prophets, false teachers, filthy living, Every damnable thing that's a sin is going to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, which is called Tartarus. That's the Greek Hebrew word for what we call hell. That's the final judgment. That is called the second death. But here it is, the word. The word that I give you, I give you the word of assurance that if thou can believe, all things are possible. How many of y'all believe that salvation is possible? Yes. Now, through Jesus Christ, he had made it possible and given us access. In other words, I'm the way, the truth, the life. If you're going to live forever, you're coming through Christ. If you're going to just go and do your thing, you will wind up in the other place. That's his word. God's law. So I want you to see this, and I want you to see what God is about to Render unto you. He's giving you due benevolence that you can live forever if you believe and trust and confess and, and repent of your sins. But if you don't, you're going to live forever in the other place. <laughs> You'll lift up your eyes in hell forever with the same mind you got now. Oh, better yet, 
What did he say? Everybody going to be changed from mortal to what? Did he say Christians going to be changed from mortal? Or did he say every human that he created, every man, every boy, every girl, if you're born into this world and you die, you're going to rise from the dead and be changed from mortal to immortality. And the Bible clearly states that if you lay down a drunk, you're going to rise up before God just like you laid down. Whatever state of mind or place that you was in, you're going to be judged accordingly. So if that's how it is, you got to wake up and see the big picture here. Now, your life depend on you believing the word and the vision by the word that if you don't change your ways, if you don't repent of your sin, turn from your wickedness, you'll lift up your eyes in hell. And you're going to be changed from mortal to immortality. What do you mean? It's a physical place? You can call it that. Die and be cast in hell and see what but everything, the Bible let me know too, death, hell, is going to give up its dead. The sea is going to give up its dead. Everything that's been hidden, it's going to come up. Everything. And then the judgment is going to be rendered and the world will be judged. You as an individual will be judged. And from that point on, you choose or you have chosen your destiny where you would spend eternity. Now I'm talking about a word that give you a vision of this end time and what's fixing to take place. If a man or woman don't accept Jesus Christ or you're sure the son of the living God as it is by the word and see the salvation in him. So you got to see the deliverance power. You got to see this vision that he has given us by his word of consolation. Amen. If you've been uh, in a place where the comfort is coming forth in you, consolation, so the word of healing should come, the word of deliverance should come, him that the son set free is what? So you're free by the word of God. So with the word, you got a vision of being free. Some people be set free and they still be sitting there like they got shackles on. Some people is delivered, but they don't know how to walk because they've been bound so long by that thing, and it feels unnatural to be a loose from it. So when you are set free from whatever the situation is, it is easy for the devil to try to come and paint a picture of you still being in the same shape you was in before the word of God came forth to deliver you. So... As a spirit of deception. Him that the Son set free is what? Do you believe that? How many of y'all believe that the Son of God has risen from the grave? He's not in the ground. He ain't tied down. He's not in a tomb. He got up. He took off his grave clothes and put on the clothes from heaven. Folded them up. Left them sitting there on the... <laughs> On that tomb, in the tomb, the angel came and rolled the stone away. Now, now Jesus could have just spoke the word and blowed the stone away if he wanted, if that's what was needed to be. But the angel, according to the word, he rolled it away. And those that was standing there, gatekeepers, them that was watching the tomb, they, they passed out like they was dead because they cannot stop what God's word has put in motion. Now I want you to see, but see, you gotta see yourself bulldozing through things that seem impossible. A vision, you gotta have a vision. You gotta see yourself making it, huh? And you know what, you, when they start prepping you, getting you prepared for what you are about to go through, they already, they'll give you a, what do they call that? They give you a little interview of what you're fixing to go through. You know you got an interview of what you're going through? Right here by his word. And I already told you, them that live godly, they're going to suffer what? 
But in the process of it, if you live in God, you going through people. And you ain't raptured out of here. If you live godly, persecution is coming. So you already got it in your mind to think soberly, think it righteously, and holy. Holiness without no man shall, you ain't going to see him. If you can't see, you can't see the vision. And by the thing that's been blinding God's people, we done got hooked on somebody's word that they taught us. But if it ain't here, don't get tied up with it. You know, I've been praying, God, clear my mind, clear my ears, clear my heart, clear my spirit, that I will not be deceived. Now, I know my time is running short on, on this broadcast, but this is Brother Ron Childers with the True Connection Ministry right here at 6250 Old Military Road. So we are praying for you. You get ready. Come on out Thursday night, 7, Sunday morning at 10, and Sunday afternoon at 6. But when we're under the tent, we'll, we'll pass the message on. God bless you. We'll see you.